Shakers and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I'm currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, whatever crafty rabbit hole I may be going down, as well as a look at my small business where I make project bags and curate tools for makers like you. My hope each week is to encourage you to nourish your own creativity, to live slowly and with intention, and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well, that you've had a wonderful week. Happy spring or happy autumn if you are in the southern hemisphere. It is officially the first day of spring as I sit down to catch up with you all today. It is early morning Sunday. I'm getting the croakiness out of my voice already. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful day. It has been increasingly more spring-like the last couple of weeks hence the croakiness and the allergies, but I welcome it wholeheartedly. It is a much needed sign of hope as usual, and it's just beautiful, and the birds are in full force here where I live. Um, they have fully returned. I have like a little wildlife refuge. I'm looking over it over there, so it's a kind of migration path where I live, and they've been rocking out in the morning. So I'll have some bird song to share with you at the end of the vlog. I thought it would be lovely to kind of end with some kind of ushering in spring kind of things that I want to do um, after I sit down and chat with you. A little bit of bird song as I knit, kind of a calm vlog, if you will. Uh, but I do have some updates to share with you first on the sweet socks that I've been knitting, um, and a little bit more. So grab your knitting or stitching, a refreshing or warm and cozy beverage, and let's catch up. So in one week, I have already finished one sock. And I have made great progress on the other. Oh, I love this pattern so much. This is the Wildflowers and Honeycomb pattern by This Handmade Life. And I'm using yarn from my stash that I got back in 2016 by Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Links to everything are down below. And uh, this is the colorway Garden Rose. You can see a theme coming along here, can you? Uh, and it's on the magpie base, which has some Selena in it. I don't know if you can see that. And oh, I love it so much. I will probably say it multiple times, so bear with me here because it's just bringing me such joy right now. The honeycomb pattern of the pattern name is in this really cool heel. Um, the heel flap has a slip stitch pattern that creates kind of this honeycomb, hence the honeycomb pattern. And then it's a traditional kind of pick up the heel, heel flap and gusset. So it is a cuff down pattern, not usually my go-to. I do enjoy a toe up uh, pattern, um, but I finished it. I even did the Kitchener stitch, y'all. <laughs> I grafted the toe and it fits really, really well. It's um, not as much negative ease as I usually like to have with a sock, but it's not overly baggy. Um, but I am using a little bit of a bigger needle than usual. Usually I use a 2.25 millimeter needle, uh, but the pattern called for a 2.5 and that's because of doing uh, the pattern work here, the wildflower part of the pattern the kind of like knit togethers and yarn overs and all of that stuff. And it's a two, what is it? Three by one twisted rib. And I didn't mention last week that I did a German twist cast on. That's what it was called for. And I really, really love it. And I've tried this sock on multiple times. So it's kind of already started to do the kind of ruffling that happens. It's a really nice, um, stretchy bind off. I use a tutorial uh, primarily by uh, Very Pink Knits here on YouTube, so I'll leave that down below if you're wanting to know more about that particular cast on. And then I 
of course, once I finished off, I cast on the second sock. And here's kind of, I've only tried this pair on once. So you can kind of see what it looks like beforehand. Um, I will say in the pattern, it's nice because it gives you an, a different option for the cuff. Of course, you can always do whatever kind of cuff that you want. I think it gives you directions for a one by one twisted rib, if I remember correctly. And then it does give you an alternate for the honeycomb heel if you wanted to do something different or a little bit more traditional. I finished the heel yesterday and honestly it took me three tries this time just because it was the end of the week fog brain honestly just had a lot on my brain i'm continuing to really welcome in the kind of side by side feeling that i know a lot of us are having right now of heartache but also joy from spring and other things in my life so, but I find that I'm still having days where I am, you know, my mind isn't in a variety of different places. Hence, I have to do the heel flap, <laughs> I think. Well, first I forgot to do the heel flap. So I started joining um, uh, the sides of the sock to do the gusset without doing this little heel flap bit for the heel, which uh, would have been troublesome. <laughs> And then I went back, uh, tinked back and did, did it, but then I was off a stitch, so it was off kilter. It wasn't centered. Um, the short rows weren't centered, I should be more specific. So then I had to tink back again, and then I finally got it right, and I've been going forth and conquering since then. So because of the patterning, and I think also because of the larger needles than usual, maybe, I don't know, um, they're very quick knits, as you can see. I'm not, you know, I'm doing a lot of sewing right now for the shop. Um, I'm finishing up pre-orders that are going to be going out this week from the February pre-orders. Um, and so, and then of course I work during the day, I have a, a full-time career job. So this has really been in between or in the evening and it's just been so perfect. I'm so happy that I cast this on. This is what I have so far left in the skein. And I'm going to do a little experiment with, to see if I can do, <laughs> if I can squeeze out another pair of shorty socks, cause I am doing a shorter leg than usual. I just did a couple of pattern repeats before I did the heel. So we'll see. Stay tuned to this space to see if my experiment, I probably should like weigh the yarn to see, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> so I did happen to look on Julie of Sweet Spare's Yarns website uh, to see if she still carries this colorway and the base as well and it looks like she does and her website she's just a gorgeous person I had the pleasure of meeting her many many years ago at Rhinebeck many many years ago 2017 2017 wasn't that long ago but yet it really was a long time ago I'm sure you all understand um but uh yeah she's an amazing yarn dyer and um, she has all of her colorways beautifully listed, so if you want to peruse there, so really, really perfect for spring. And this week, besides knitting on this sock, as I mentioned, I've just been sewing as much as possible, and definitely this weekend, things have, the rhythm of my weeks have definitely shifted as of late, where I can't really sew too much during the week, uh, which is to be expected during breaks in between work or in the mornings or the evenings. My energy levels have shifted and changed, and so I really have to uh, carve out the majority of my weekends now for sewing for the shop. So uh, that is what I did yesterday, hence why, partially why I'm sitting down to chat with you on a Sunday morning instead of my usual Saturday. That might start to have to be a permanent thing. We'll kind of go with the flow here. But um but also the other reason is I think a lot of people were excited for spring coming in and there were some unusual loud parties in my apartment complex last night. So at the time that I usually would have sat down to chat with you all, it was like a rager was happening. So 
to each their own. I hope they had fun. It's very quiet this morning though. <laughs> But that is pretty much it that I've been up to. A thank you again for all of your pre-orders for the Lavender Bees bags that were last week. Those ended last week. And I am going to be uh, ordering the rest of the materials uh, here tomorrow on Monday. And then they're still on target, uh, knock on wood, for five to six weeks to receive everything, all of the fabric and everything, and for me to whip them up and sew them. And I am going to be next week introducing a new collection, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and then also, sorry, just random organic uh, shop update here. Um, I have had a couple of emails and messages this week asking if I'm going to be doing holiday boxes again this year. And the answer is yes. Um, I had mentioned that maybe I'd be doing it in mid-March, putting the listings up in mid-March, but the timing just was not right. But I am going to be doing it here in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. I can't wait. I can't wait. I have so many ideas. It's going to be so much fun this year. So I am going to leave it here for the chatting part of the vlog today, and I'm going to leave it with some calm music, a little bit more knitting on my socks, but more so doing some planting that I picked up because it's the first day of spring. I thought it'd be very lovely. It would be lovely to plant some things and to start a windowsill garden again. If you have been watching for a while, a couple of years ago, I really started getting into plants for the first time. I've got like a plant up there, plant there now. I'm like, who am I? <laughs> it's part of who I am now, but an, a couple of years ago, it was very unusual for me to have, to keep things alive. I had a self-described black thumb and I've learned so much and I'm starting to branch out. And one things I, one of the things that I learned was that when I had my little windowsill garden, the planters that I had were a bit too tall for um, being able to get the sun, the little bit of sun that I get uh, through my window, direct sunlight, I should say. And I saw these the other day over at uh, Target or Target. Uh, one of my favorite brands is Magnolia and they're little herb pots. And I thought they'd be the perfect size to be able to get some direct sunlight in. So I've picked up basil and then rosemary and the third one is mint so sweet and I love these little terracotta pots and then I also picked up I think this might be a little bit too tall but we'll see it's not too much taller than this guy here but I picked up a sunflower kit to be mindful and kind of a a bit of a prayer you know growing little thing for my beloved ukraine which uh, thank you for your comments and for your notes last week i got a lot of personal notes as well because i shared kind of my slight personal connection to the ukraine and how i've been feeling and um and continued love to everybody in Eastern Europe and in the Ukraine if you have to see this and in Russia as well if you're if you're experiencing hardship but I saw this and I and I I've been uh, gathering sunflowers hint hint for future things for the shop um, but I thought this would be lovely to plant today as well so I'm gonna leave it here for the chat enjoy this kind of planting montage and knitting montage with some music and some bird song from throughout the week as well and I will see you next Sunday
nothing new But it's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight So lucky, oh.